Hi. So in this video, we are going to learn about the second property of conditional probability. So it says, if A and B are any two events of a sample space S and F is an event of S such that P of F, that means the probability of event F happening is not equal to zero, then probability of A union B where F has already happened is equal to probability of A where F has already happened plus probability of B where F has already happened minus the probability of A intersection B where F has already happened, right? Or probability of A union B where F has already happened is equal to probability of A where F has already happened plus the probability of B where F has already happened if a and B are disjoint. So this is the second property and now we are going to prove this property. If we take the left hand side that means this probability of A union B where F has already happened is equal to probability of A union B intersection F divided by probability of F. What we had? We had probability of event E happening where F has already happened is actually equal to probability of E intersection F divided by probability of F, right? Or this can be written as the number of elements in A union B intersection F divided by number of elements in F, right? Yes, and if I use the distributive law of set theory, this A union B intersection F can actually be written as A intersection F union B intersection F, right? And number of elements in this will be actually equal to the number of elements in A union B intersection F, right? And then we have number of elements in F. And this will be equal to the number of elements in A intersection F plus the number of elements in B intersection F minus number of elements in A intersection B intersection F, right? Divided by number of elements in set F. Why is this so? Because we have learned that number of elements of A union B is equal to number of elements in A plus number of elements in B minus the number of elements in A intersection B, right? This we have learned in set theory. And um, here if you replace this A by A intersection F and this B by B intersection F, you will get this F intersection F will be equal to F. So that is why I have written F only once, right? So. It is very important to know your set theory properly. So if you have any doubt, you can go through the videos of set theory. And this can be written as N of A intersection F divided by N of F plus N of B intersection F divided by N of F minus N of A intersection B intersection F divided by n of f, right? And what is this? This is probability of a where f has already happened plus probability of b where f has already happened minus the probability of a intersection b where f has already happened, right? And this is what is our first part of the property, right? What is saying? It's saying probability of A union B where F has already happened is equal to probability of A where F has already happened plus probability of B where F has already happened minus probability of A intersection B where F has already happened. And now let's concentrate on the second part of the rule. Second part is saying if A and B are disjoint then the probability of A union B where F has already happened is equal to probability of A where F has already happened plus probability of B where F has already happened. So that will prove from here. 
if A and B are disjoint set, then number of elements in A intersection B will actually be equal to zero. Then this probability, which actually represents probability of A intersection B, where F has already happened, which is nothing but the number of elements in A intersection B intersection F divided by number of elements in F will actually be zero because the number of elements in A intersection B are zero. So the number of elements in A intersection B intersection F will also be zero. So this part actually becomes zero if A and B are disjoint and then the probability of A union B where F has already happened becomes probability of A where F has already happened plus the probability of B where F has already happened. This was the second property and in next video we are going to learn the third property. So keep watching MathSmart.